Hi, welcome back. Today's topic is potential energy. You have the potential. Okay, enough of that. Let's get going. Okay, so to start with, we need to define uh, two different types of forces. They're forces, but they behave in different ways. Uh, conservative forces, uh, those are forces where the work done is independent of the path that the object the work being done on takes. Okay, And if you do work on the object and you start and end at the same place, it's called a closed path, that work is zero. And this work is directly related to a change in the potential energy. If the work is positive, the potential energy change is negative. If the work is negative, the potential energy change is positive. Some examples of conservative work. Gravity, electrostatics, magnetostatics, springs. Those are the main types that we will come across in our uh, high school physics career. Okay, some non-conservative forces. This is where the work that's done depends upon the path that you take. In other words, the total distance traveled. It matters. Okay, work along a closed path is not zero. And usually the work done by a non-conservative force changes the mechanical energy uh, by making something get warm, increasing the thermal energy. Kind of like what friction does or air resistance drag. And then magnetodynamic in e &M, you'll experience that. Okay, so it matters. If you push a box around the floor, it matters if you go all the way around the outside of the room to get back to the same place or if you zigzag around. It depends upon how far you're pushing it, the friction force times the distance. Whereas if you're lifting an object up, as long as you uh, start at the same height and end at the same height, it doesn't matter how you get from one height to the next. That's what we mean by it's path independent. If you lift a box up in the air and then bring it back down to the floor, the total work done is zero. Okay, that's what we mean by path independent or closed path is zero. Two types of forces, conservative and non-conservative. Okay, so recap, conservative forces, and yes, those are the red forces. Work can be calculated from starting and ending points only. The actual path is ignored. Work along a closed path is zero. Starting ending points are the same. No work is done. The work changes the potential energy. And some examples are, again, gravity, springs. And in this case, conservation of mechanical energy holds. One type of energy is mechanical energy. There are others. Oh, those blue forces, the non-conservative forces. Work is path dependent. It matters the path that you take from one place to the next. Okay, just knowing the starting and ending points isn't sufficient. You need to knew, know more about the path. Work along a closed path is not zero. The work does change the mechanical energy. Examples, friction drag, and conservation mechanical do energy does not hold. Some of the energy has been changed from mechanical energy into other types of energy. For example, thermal energy, things got warmer, sound energy, light energy. The energy has been transformed from one kind to another kind. Okay, It's not lost, it's just in a different form. So, potential energy. Potential energy is a type of mechanical energy possessed by an object by virtue of its position or configuration. In chemistry, the energy of a molecule depends upon the arrangement of the atoms in the molecule. In mechanics, position of the object above the ground determines the object's potential energy. 
we represent potential energy. The symbol for potential energy is U. Some examples are gravitational potential energy, how high you are above the Earth's surface, and that's U sub G. Electrical potential energy is U sub E. It's like the energy contained in a battery. Spring potential energy is U sub S. The work done by conservative forces is the negative of potential energy change. Okay, so gravity is a conservative force. If you lift the box up, gravity is doing negative work. Well, if I were to let the box go, it would fall to the Earth. Well, the reason it would fall to the Earth is it had potential energy. It had energy stored in it based upon its position above the Earth. And that potential energy is going to get converted into kinetic energy as it falls. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. We'll get some experience using that during class. Now here's another uh, way of looking at this and kind of how we go about doing calculations. Change in gravitational potential energy is the negative of the work done by the gravitational force on an object when it's moved. For objects near the Earth's surface, and this is important, we will learn later that um, when you are going a long distance away from the Earth's surface, the gravitational force changes. Okay, but near the Earth's surface, it's pre pretty constant and always points towards the center of the Earth. So near the surf Earth's surface, the gravitational pull of the Earth is roughly constant. The force necessary to lift an object is at a constant velocity is equal to the weight of the object. So we can say the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the negative of the work done by gravity, which is equal to mg, which is the weight of the object, the force of gravity, times the height that it's moved. That's the change in gravitational potential energy. Okay, it's important to, to know that I'm saying the change in gravitational potential energy. We have to pick where zero potential energy is and measure changes from there. Um, we're not actually telling, saying anything about what the actual absolute value of the potential energy is. Um, it's always in terms of whatever place we pick as zero. Spring potential energy. We've already talked about this. Springs obey Hooke's law. And we say spring force is the restoring force exerted by the spring. The spring always wants to go to equilibrium. So whatever the force of the spring is always trying to back bring the object back to equilibrium. Okay, and the spring potential energy is equal to one half K times the displacement from equilibrium squared. Okay. With springs, we know where the zero point is. It's the equilibrium point. Okay, so that's where we pick our zero point for spring potential energy. Conservative forces in potential energy. Okay, conservative forces, if it does positive work, potential energy is lost. It's usually turned into kinetic energy. Conservative force does negative work. In other words, when you lift an object up off the ground, the potential energy is gained. Gravity has done negative work. And for gravity, the change of potential energy is minus the mass times gravity times the final height minus mass times gravity times the initial height. And for springs, the work done by the spring is minus one half, one half k x final squared minus one half k x initial squared. And here's your multiple choice question. Welcome back. Let's do a practice problem. We have a diver that drops from the water to the water from a height of 20 meters. His gravitational potential energy decreases by 12,500 joules. How much does the diver weigh? Oh, well, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to 
draw a picture and I'm going to do a free body diagram on the diver just to make sure I've accounted for for the forces and what's actually going on here. So our diver is diving our diver is diving to the water and the water is 20 meters below okay and diver is going that way so up here let's say that the diver has 12,500 joules of energy and down here at the bottom he'll have zero. The potential energy has changed by zero. The only force acting on the diver is mg. So the change of potential energy of the diver ug is equal to mg h final minus m g h initial and I'm going to put a minus sign around that okay because the change of potential energy is the negative of the work done by gravity now we can substitute in we want to find out how much the person weighs which is what mg is. m times g is the person's weight. So change in potential energy is equal to minus the weight times height final minus height initial and we're still looking for the weight. So weight is equal to minus the change in potential energy divided by the change in height. And let's substitute in some numbers. So the change in potential energy is uh, negative 12,500. Okay, it decreases by 12,500. Divided by the change in height. The final height is zero. The initial height is 20. Okay, so now I think we're ready to calculate the weight of the person. Okay, so a minus times a minus is 12,500 divided by negative 20. Oh, why is we going to get a negative weight? Well, it's the direction that the weight is. Down is negative. Okay, so that's why we're going to get a negative sign there. So 12,500, let's pull this over here, 12,500, well, let's go back and fix that, 500 divided by 20 equals 625, 625, let's fix that, 25 newtons and it's minus and that's just a directional sign we never say somebody weighs minus 625 newtons well this is the direction that the force of gravity is applied so it's 625 newtons that's how much the person weighs well let's see what's next for us it's your free response good luck we'll see you next time